Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. As always, thank you for your support over on Ko-Fi and Patreon. Uh, Patreon exclusive videos going up there every week. We couldn't do it without you guys' support. It's very much appreciated. Yeah, absolutely. You know, before we get going, just want to ask for prayers for our good friends, Leah and Neil. You've heard us talk about them many times. They're in the Asheville area. They're actually in Waynesville. And um, they are both sick at the moment and and also not able to get around and get any sort of help. Um, you know, so they were asking for prayers. There's an awful lot of prayers going out right now to all those people suffering uh, from everything that's happening in, you know, whether we're going to say the storms, the floods, uh, all sorts of sudden unexpected health issues, you know, the wars. It is one thing after another. There's a lot going on. Um, we're trying to uh, not uh, add to anxiety, yet at the same time, we understand so many people want to get our take on what's happening out there. So that is what we do. All the while, again, preparing for the worst while putting out as high a positive vibes as you can. It's, it's a tricky needle to thread. It, it is, but we're threading it and we're going to do it because people need help out there. They absolutely need help. And there's many of us who are not able to just hop in a vehicle and go and help, but we're going to help energetically. So uh, we're just really hoping for a lot of prayers for our friends Leah and Neil and everyone else who's in that situation. There's so many. They cannot get to a doctor. I have a feeling that the water, the water is just not good. And this is going to help. This is going to happen across the board. So let's please, let's send as much energy as we can to them and, and as many prayers as possible. Yeah, there's a lot of conflicting things going on in accounts. And that's part of what you have when you have this dystopian system in place. You see, Cuba did have a massive blackout. This is saying uh, that it's entered its third day without electricity um, and then you'll see somebody say no they're restoring it's not true they're restoring the blackouts which are partially happening you know again there's this whole geopolitical thing uh, going on which you know is the case all around the world again uh, our political structure is one of uh, divide and conquer and until we realize that we will won't really make true progress now oscar landfalled on uh, cuba and by the way it was a hurricane cat one hurricane it's going to dump almost 18 inches of rain and this is going to lead to obviously more flooding uh, i was saying to cindy again cuba where it's position should be a paradise uh, it really really should be and it's just the uh political situation that keeps it from being really a paradise uh, as they have suffered from sanctions from the Western world, as, as the BRICS nations now, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, and more, as more nations have been joining BRICS, uh, now have a, a larger economy than the G7, the group of the seven largest industrialized nations. So, you know, things are starting to change up, but this is going to be a very, very turbulent time. Here you have crowds flooding the streets, banging pots and pans in protest against the blackouts, crippling poverty, and severe shortages of food and water. Well, you know, again, it, it's it's really the the ultimate guilty party is the the leadership of the world. That is just so apparently obvious to us. And to many people, here you see people are required to show their food rationing coupon book to buy food in state-run grocery stores. Now, you might say state-run grocery stores, but then when you look to, um, you know, when you look to the U.S. and the Western world, what do you really have? You, you have politicians that are controlled by corporations corporations that have a monopoly on food production for the most part a lot of good brands that were producing organic um, foods and and things that were healthy alternatives get bought out by these big food producing 
uh, really poison-producing monstrous corporations, which then start to produce less <laughs> healthy versions of that organic uh, food, even though, again, it, it somehow makes it through as organic labeled. Well, that's, again, because, you know, the FDA, uh, and when we look to, like, the roundtable of the FDA and the CDC, we see those that are in charge of organizations like that coming from big FARMA or coming from the big food corporations. And many of those big food corporations were making cigarettes until it got to be um, less um, profitable because more people realized the cigarettes were killing them. And so now the food is, is doing the same thing. It, it's one big toxic mess, and there is only one solution, and that's that's the elimination of the power structure that has been on, on the planet. That's the only solution, and you're not going to get it to willingly give away power. We have to create alternatives, and that's going to be easier done in very, very small ways, like in your own town and neighborhood. Right, with, with your neighbors, I mean, with your family. Uh, it, it's going to have to be baby steps. There's no no way to big step our way into this. And I think that's the frustrating point for everyone is how, how are we going to do this? How, how is the, What is this going to look at look like? But, you know, all things that come into being, they start with a thought. That's just, that's a natural law. And I, I think sometimes that that gets pushed back <laughs> and it, it people don't think that those thoughts are very important but right now these thoughts of how we can free ourselves from this control system that's those are our our uh, best bets one thing that's hit me in interacting with locals um, where we are is how awake they are um, they're totally awake I mean maybe this is just a uh, a deep south thing a country thing but boy they are awake the there's just and i think they're even awake when it comes to 45 even though most of them are are going to be going and checking that box um there's something when i talk to them that they're almost guilty that they're going for 45 as if they th know that it's not no choice in the system is good but they feel it's their only choice at this point in time um, again, the system is in its its last gasps, and it's it's losing its luster. Uh, as much as they try to, you know, put lipstick on it, it it's not really working anymore because people can see this, and yet people are 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 risking their own lives to help each other. And this is truly how we grow spiritually. This is really um, this is part of the big test of why we're here. How are we going to react in these times? Uh, you have Angela, a 28-year-old bartender, jumps in to save a man in distress who fell off his motorcycle and was having issues getting swept away. This is in Sicily. Um, you know, this is something that we uh, shared from the guides, I want to say was back around when the Plague Upon the Land was first coming out. Around 2020-ish, 2019-2020, they started to give us um, a little bit of info when we poked uh, as to the level of the flooding and everything that we're going to see. Um, of course, you know, there are those out there that, again, David Icke did a video uh, last couple days where he was talking about how most controlled opposition don't realize they're controlled opposition. They don't know they're controlled opposition. They think they got it all figured out, but they don't yet. There's, they're still being able to be controlled in one paradigm, such as, again, pushing maybe the religious narrative or pushing that's only left, it's not really the right. You know, and yet, again, so many out there are waking up. It's one stage at a time for most individuals. But again, that controlled opposition, as long as the system can still util utilize you for one thing, they will utilize you, and then they'll let you reach a little bit more um, because it's safe, because it's still within the narrative. So when you're talking about, you know, uh, geomagnetic excursions, when you're talking about, um, you know, mud flood events that are coming about cyclically uh, at certain intervals, and you're just saying, you know, this is the action of 
uh, whether it's gas giants or, you know, again, the magnetic pole weakening, uh, it's, it's still falling into their hands because it's not pointing out the technology that is so much more advanced than most humans have a clue of that is really uh, triggering and amplifying everything. There is a natural process to this, just as there are the four ages, the four yugas. So when we look to uh, these type of events, yeah, you know, and when you become into a dark age like a Kali Yuga, uh, these things get triggered as the dark system is, is doing its best to take over. And then again, when you're leaving, it's the same thing. Uh, so you will have these cycles. But there, the technology in play is the key here because these things are being augmented to very, very high degrees. And so those that are saying uh, it's just natural, like this flooding here in Sorrento, Italy, uh, <laughs> Niagara Falls and Sorrento, Italy. This hasn't happened before. Well, you know, again, it's not necessarily in our times, but now it's happening all over the world in our times right now. You know, it could be that we never saw anything like this 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago, or you had one event that would happen, you know, in, in the past generations. But at the same time, when you look closely, if you look really closely, like the, the, I guess you could say the looniest of the loons, the ones that are looking at the, the mud floods and Tartaria and these resets that apparently are more like uh, ongoing with perhaps peaks not thousands of years apart, but only a, a couple hundred years apart. Then you start to understand, you know, this is technology is what we're looking at. You know, I got that information many years ago, too, when we were in New Mexico, that uh, we're only looking at hundreds of years apart. And how long does it take to wipe out the information of a generation? It doesn't take long, especially when everyone is poisoned and there's no memory and there's no honoring of the elders and there's no there's no more curiosity of the children sitting down with grandma and grandpa, getting, getting their take on things, getting the information that they had. And there's no interest in, you know, gathering with your elders and understanding what they are able to do and learn and and passing that down from one generation to the to the next that that is all but just completely going away because people are so busy in their own lives doing their own thing not you know shining a light on those things that are so very very wrong they're just busy they're probably working and doing things that they absolutely have to do to keep food on the table and a roof over the head and this is just not fair so we are really losing our quality of life and it's just fraying it's fraying at a very fast rate and we're doing our best to just try to stop it and how do you stop it well you you bring recognition to it you say hey this is wrong so for every person we can get uh, if we can get their attention that's one more person that helps us stop the fraying of civilization and this is more uh, again over there this is in Bologna and Romagna in Italy massive floods this is global this is global this is not just Asheville it's not just you know our, our little beloved Waynesville area uh, that we enjoyed so much and Cindy and I you know again go in the boojums and we would see people and it'd be friendly and uh, you know we'd play some pool and darts and have a good time. We, you know, did the same in uh, Little Nevada and had a great time uh, out there with, with the locals. I, again, I think if locals got to know locals in all these different parts of the world, we would get along pretty good. Oh, on the whole, I, I do not think we would have the issues that the leadership of the world has. The leadership of the world is demonic absolutely it it thrives on chaos and then we look to roswell new mexico flash flooding right now too what the heck is going on with all these floods roswell this is desert yes the desert can flood and it's a scary thing when it does it really is a next level flood uh, as you see cars floating away you know again there's more water they've told us you know with their science 
and some of their science we should make note of others we should take with a grain of salt because it's really sales but they have told us that there's more water locked up in the crust than in the oceans what happens when you use technology to bring that water from the crust up to the surface you're going to get floods like you've never seen before and then the displacement of water will also trigger uh, earthquakes like you might not have ever seen before so that's the other thing to be on the lookout for as this is historic flooding roads submerged homes you know being swept away again it, it's the same thing we're seeing look at these cars you know look this is all over the world and roswell there is no one spot that is the best place to be um i would say you know again a spot with hardly anybody <laughs> because there's going to be no reason to have a spotlight on it um you know this is this is part of these times you're going to have to really work on the intuition and listening to the intuition um i felt very very happy in uh in the Asheville, Waynesville area, yet at the same time I knew we weren't going to be able to stay there. I, I didn't know exactly why, but you know, I listened to the voice even when uh, it doesn't seem to make sense because in hindsight, it always makes sense. Mm. Well, it, it's actually logic that you have to worry about because the brain is going to make instant decisions that are actually very, very good. But we take the time to go through logic and talk ourselves out of these decisions. It, it's just, it's natural for humans to do that. So I, I think it's important to kind of guard against um, talking yourself out of your first instinct. And it's really, really difficult to do. Now, there's, there's some things that I've heard, and I, I don't want to upset anyone. I really don't. But there's this thing that some some are saying well the underground tunnels the bad tunnels they're getting flooded out so and somehow that makes this okay and i i just i don't believe it i don't buy it i i think they're going to spin whatever story they need to spin to get people to go along at least at some level and looking at this this is just not okay at any level it's just not okay and when I look at the state of the planet, I still see taxes going up. I still see people struggling. I still see food bills that are outrageous. I still see people not be able, being able to speak their mind. So I don't see any changes that are going on despite what people m might be thinking or you know the hope that oh they're they're doing something good with these horrible floods no i just do not believe that way i think standing together and saying this is not okay at all in any way shape or form maybe that's where i want to be that's where i want to stand again i think people will look and they'll say well 2016 to 2020 was better than 2020 to 2024 this is intolerable we have to at least wind it back four years uh, because where we're at now is intolerable and it's getting crazily uh, out of control and insane. So, you know, that's what they, they want to, uh, how they want to view it. But yet, at the same time, uh, what you have is a, a system that understands this. And as I've pointed out before, I mean, we go from uh, the Reagan years and then four Bush years, um, it, we go, you know, to... A different extreme with the Clintons and then we go uh, to eight years of Bushes and then we go to eight years of Obama and then we go to four uh, of 45 and then four of 46 and if you look at it it's a pendulum swinging it swings and then it goes back the other way and that pendulum is is swinging to the point where it's gonna flip over that's the intent they want to flip it over to where they're just going to do away with the system and all the illusion of the system and people will be cheering it on. And, you know, again, you could think back to what they've uh, shown us in, say, Star Wars, where, you know, Palpatine really is the dark lord of the Sith. And what happens is, you know, he, he says we're going to have to, in order to face this big, big, um, you know, hurdle, this test uh, against our freedoms, etc. We're going to have to suspend the republic, and you know we're going to have to have a dictatorship. 
And this is what they are getting ready to sell. It's going to be a dictatorship. So, I mean, un understandable that people would want to see anything but what we've had with the last four years. But at the same time, be careful that you don't jump out of the fire with the frying pan. And of course, you know, <clears throat> 46 between uh, her and him, you know, you, you couldn't get two more bumbling, stumbling idiots. Um, and this is why they chose them, because they need to be bumbling, stumbling idiots. And they also need to be telegraphing the fact that uh, 45 is 78, and it's gonna be another bumbling, stumbling idiot um, in short time. And you know they are kind of also making it look like his health is shaky. Now, his choice for VP is young and uh, has very dark energy swir swirling around him. And again, when Cindy got a vision of who was gonna be uh, in control uh, in these times, it was somebody that was younger and very, very demonic and very, very militaristic. Um, and that was the overall feeling, was a, a military dictatorship that's coming. So, you know, again, this is just what we are seeing. As this person says, they've lost everything. And this is in Roswell, New Mexico. We couldn't get any more different than Asheville. But this is Chiswick, West London in the UK. What do we see? Same thing. You know, this is a global mud flood they are instigating. It's a global mud flood, and this is part of their, their plans. This is Vancouver Island. Uh, as you see, four to five inches of rain and major flooding going on. Massive flooding, road closures across Metro Vancouver on Election Day. That was Canada by the way. And Western France, y you see these waves crashing. And people are having fun now, but it reminds me of uh, Independence Day. Oh, everybody, let's get up on the top of the building and wave high, you know, and then boom, the beam comes. Oh, that beam coming from the sky. We've seen that a lot of times. We, we have seen that. In fact, you know, the laser technology, a lot of people are catching on that a lot of these rock formations are actually melted structures around the world in past times. Oh, if you want to read a, a sobering uh, account, you know, there's, you read, read all about what happened, you know, over in, in Lebanon not now, but it is still being cleaned up right now. Uh, Lebanon by uh, Israel, they are, are doing that as we speak. Uh, also southern Syria with the giants that were there. And again, Bashan, uh, Og, Og of Bashan, a biblical giant. Again, he was, um, you know, of course he's viewed in, in these times by the control system that was fighting him. As you know, a negative entity, just like David and Goliath, who really was the bad guy in that story, David or Goliath? When you look at it, everything is written from the standpoint of uh, the victors. This is what we have to recognize. This is France. France, by the way, you know, another place just incredible. And those those massive waves were in France too. So you know, it's easy to forget about Florida, everything else going on. But yeah. Yeah, two major hurricanes in 13 days. That's going to take a while to fix things up. Florida does a really good job compared to most. But at the same time, Florida gets more hurricanes than any other state in the U.S. And, you know, this is an exchange from Hurricane Helene where this um, the daughter is, is saying, you know, please answer my calls. I can't. Can't get out. It's bad, Lexi. I love you all. And that was the last words. Um, you know, this really hits us hard when you see this. This is into thin air. Of course, he does a great job. And he's always working really hard um, trying to, to show things. And Mark Graves, uh, you know, there's, there's how much, how many? I will never know. I, I don't believe the numbers on Katrina. I don't believe the numbers on Harvey. And I did see, um, I think it was Maria that hit Puerto Rico. And they were talking small numbers, like 20, 30, 40. You know, one life is too many. But 
Uh, and then like a year and a half later, all of a sudden number came out and it was like in the thousands. And it was like, wow, you know, they give you this number like a year and a half later and it's massive compared to how they were downplaying it. Now this is saying more than 615 missing on this one particular uh, uh, list. And, you know, Asheville had a homeless population of about 200. So, but, you know, uh, again, the homeless, even though they had nowhere to go, at the same time, I, I would say that some of the homeless, unless they're so hyped up on, on uh, you know, substances, w might have a little bit better intuition because they're more mindful of, of the elements because they're out in the elements. Now, you know, this is talking again, and this was a video we showed um, earlier it's in the thousands, tens of thousands, I entire towns, you know, are, are gone. And, you know, so easy to forget if you're not there, or you don't have a loved one there. But this is, again, around the entire world. Look at how high up the bridge is, right? Look at how high up the bridge is. Look where the water is. What is that? Is that 30 feet of flood water uh, or more? I mean, this was massive. This is like a massive tidal wave that came out of nowhere. And I don't think the rainfall is is enough. Um, and I've heard some people talking about different dams um, that they're not reporting on that, that perhaps failed. Um, you know, again, everything is possible because so much is blocked off and it's not easy to get around. Mm-mm. No, I mean, this is uh, such an enormous amount of water. This is very abnormal. This is very unusual. I don't see anything natural about this at all, even though they, they want it to look natural. Oh, it's a natural element. It's water. Um, <laughs> no, nothing to see here. And it's just getting worse and worse and worse. I, I don't see anything getting better. I don't see anyone besides really private people um, helping other people get out the generators and get out the blankets and get out the heaters and the kerosene and the gasoline and the diesel. I mean, just very small, small operations. Um, and people, just they're doing the absolute best that they can. You know, what happens to all of our tax dollars? I mean, this should be covered and then some. We should have this warm, fuzzy blanket to lay over everyone and give them comfort and, and give them a warm place to stay and take care of their pets. That's how much we pay. But it, it's not going to these people that actually pay into the taxes none of it's going to them it's all going to the big mansions the big cars the parties the alcohol the everything and it's, it's just not right it's just not right in northern china experienced a rare cold spell in mid-october 21 stations breaking mid-month records and Beijing dropping below freezing for the seventh earliest time in history. Yeah, we're just going to see more extremes going in both directions. That That is the reality of, of what we're uh, facing at this point in time. And again, it gets you thinking to those numbers. You know which numbers we're talking about. It's us. We, we It's up to us because, you, you know, again, your, your governments are not out to help anybody. It's a big load, but we can do it. Right. I mean, we're the carbon that they want to reduce. It's us. It's us. It's us. It's us. But what what are we doing here by shedding light on everything? Yes, I know it's not happy news. I know it's not warm and fuzzy. But by shedding light on this, we're sending a lot of people a lot of really good energy, giving their guides and angels a nudge and an okay to walk through that door and give assistance. So I want you guys to please stay focused on that. There's there's good in everything sometimes it's just not evident at all at first but we're going to get there we're going to get there absolutely as always guys thanks for your support source bless and namaste namaste